I'm gonna I'm say, don't I'm away today, it looks fake. And I me, but oh well, <laughs> it will do. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna start with story time. Okay, so I guess I've put on the GoFundMe what happened and everything, but I haven't really spoken about it properly um, in person. Also, bear with me, I get really, really restless from the chemo. Um, my body's been mute, basically, so I'm really breathless. I'm just humans around my heart and lungs. So things like talking for me is also quite hard. Um, whew, okay. So <laughs> this all started when I moved to the Galapagos Islands last year in July. I decided that I hadn't lived enough life, I had an itch, I wanted to scratch and I left my whole life in England and I moved to the Galapagos Islands where I taught kindergarten in the mornings and in the afternoon I did English teaching for kids between aged 5 and uh, 18. It was the best experience of my life, amazing. I was going to go back, um, actually for another year at least, but then all this happened so I couldn't go back obviously which was devastating um where to start already so the past two months i was in galapagos so i'd say from end of december to february i started to have some bad health symptoms started off one day when i wake up and had painful breathing it really hurt to breathe um i went to the hospital about that and they just they did an x-ray said it looks clear don't know what it is, probably carrying her to a heavy bag or something like that. So I was like, okay, yes, must be that. I do put a lot on my bag every day when I go to work with the kids. Um, but then it started to get gradually worse. Well, to the point where I couldn't actually swallow um, my food properly. So I'd have a pasta dish and I'd say I'd be sat there for an hour and a half trying to eat a pasta dish. And it would just wouldn't it would be stuck that it wouldn't go down, it'd be really scary actually, it was a really horrible feeling. But again, like I went to doctors, private doctors out there, I told them all my symptoms, they just said that it was just stress, anxiety, there's nothing wrong with you, you're young, you're fit, you're healthy. And obviously you medical professionals, you believe them because you want to believe them, right? <laughs> you're like, oh okay, oh, panic over. So I didn't, I believed them paid lots of money for sessions just to be told I had muscular compressions, anxiety, stress. Got to the point where I even had this really bad rash the very last week I was there. Um, all over my body it was actually the cancer just screaming out for help. Um, my whole immune system I found out at the end but they told me it was shingles. <laughs> so I wish it wasn't, the doctors have not told me at all. Um, but we did lots of blood tests and they all just came back as that I was anemic. Now I've since recently found out that blood tests coming back as anemic are often a sign of cancer not for everyone don't panic <laughs> not at all it's not you know but apparently a lot of times it is passed off as being anemic when it's actually something more serious and it can be a cause of underlying something underlying so i wasn't i was anemic but it was because of the cancer um yeah so i booked a flight home on a whim actually it was a very very big whim so it <laughs> I don't know why I felt like booking it, but I felt like I needed to go home. I wanted to see my family, so I was going to go for a couple of weeks. So I booked a flight home, left my belongings in Galapagos with a friend, um, and left my bike there because I was going to go back. And I came back, and I just felt really well on the way home, but I kind of accepted it was the way I was feeling now. It was just the norm to feel that way. Sorry. So now I feel that way, I accept this new normal of just feeling shit. <laughs> like, because the doctor said I was fine. So I thought maybe I'm just a little unhealthy or I don't know, like I'm not getting some vitamins that I need. Um, so I had a 40 hour journey home from Galapagos to Guayaquil to Amsterdam to Leeds. Very poorly the whole way. Um, got home, very weird feeling being home. I thought I'd be happier, but I just felt so weak and so odd and just disorientated almost. It was not kind of what I expected. I was very happy to be home to my family, obviously, but something was just a, a bit weird. I don't know what it was, obviously, I can put my finger on it now. But when I was seeing like, my best friend Georgia and stuff, I just wasn't myself at all, I really wasn't. 
48 hours after getting off the plane, I went to Booths in Ilkley the supermarket to go and do a haul of food that I missed out on in Galapagos with my grandparents. And I got halfway around the supermarket, vision started to go, a hearing started to go, and started to pass out, and then started vomiting. And this was cold because I went just completely blue. <laughs> My whole face was blue, my lips were blue, I was out cold, it wasn't, it was, yeah, terrifying. I remember just telling the paramedics who were asking how I felt when I came around, I just said, I just, all I can describe is I feel like I'm dying. Like, it wasn't like fainting, it didn't feel like fainting, it just felt like I was fading. It was really weird. Um, so, took me to the hospital, put me in A&E. It became very apparent I shouldn't be in A&E because I was literally dying. <laughs> I was passing out every 10 minutes and coming around, out again every minute coming around. Um, at this point I thought it was maybe like a tropical disease or something like that. Could be like dengue, TB. So they tried to get bloods out of me. Couldn't get bloods out of me for some reason. Um, it wouldn't work so they told me to drip to make me hydrate in my veins to get bloods out of me. During all this I was still passing out every 10 minutes, it was absolutely terrifying the worst experience of my whole entire life. Um, I thought I was dying, which I, I was, it turned out, we found out later on. And then had the blood test finally done, managed to get something and the kind of doctors came and said, right, so the blood tests are really, really abnormal. We don't know why though. So I was like, okay. So they got us another senior doctor to check it out and they asked me about symptoms in Galapagos and stuff. And they said, have you had an x-ray? I said, yeah, I did, I had one in Galapagos two months ago. I did and it was clear apparently um, but they said okay we'll do another one just in case I said okay yeah that's fine went for an x-ray now I think about it I remember them saying to me when I was getting it done put that on urgent <laughs> they'd obviously seen something on the x-ray radiographers but I hadn't picked up on that but I do remember it now my, <laughs> when I'm thinking about it it's crazy to think about so it was obviously this big thing and then, so that came back and they said, right, so your exo was clear two months ago, more or less, but it's very much not now. You've got a huge mass around your heart. And I was like, okay, but at this point you still don't think the worst. You're just like, oh, okay. Maybe I think you see thinking TB maybe, like tropical disease, dengue, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. But we didn't think cancer ever. So at this point I went for a CT scan, which is where they put a dye in, inject a dye into you. Make sure you want to pee yourself, it's horrible. I'll do a whole story on that because it was quite a funny experience, but also not nice. And that came back and was interpreted from some people in Australia, because no one works at 3am here on CT scans. It was 3am at this point. Um, and then I remember being in my side room and there was a load of doctors crowded around screen and I could see them looking very worried and looking back at me and looking back at the screen and kind of looking at each other and at this point I think I kind of started to clock on that something was a bit wrong <laughs> and I was like oh dear and then two doctors came into my room and said we've got some really difficult news to share with you I think at this point I just was kind of went into shock I, I don't remember much of what I felt when I was told they just said yeah it's 99.9% cancer um, so I had a huge tumour here about this big which is why obviously I couldn't breathe <laughs> everything I also had a little tumour here under my armpit I'm saying I had I'd probably still do now I'm not sure um, because of the chemo and lymph nodes here these two are also full of cancer so it was just it was the most advanced stage it could have got basically and the reason why I felt like I was dying is because I was quite literally dying the tumour was engulfing my heart and stopping the blood going to my brain so if for example I had gone to bed that night <laughs> and not gone to hospital they told me I would have quite literally just died in my sleep because it would have just engulfed my heart and that would have been it gone <laughs> so I mean I'm saying this stuff now like it's normal because I've I guess I've kind of processed it but it's crazy to even say <laughs> Like I literally shouldn't be here, it feels like there's so many things or circumstances that could have happened that didn't happen that would have meant that I wouldn't be here. If I'd have got a flight back two days later I wouldn't be here. They don't have the the, the facilities in Galapagos to detect a tumour like this and get the right treatment I was told. 
it would just wouldn't be possible. If I'd have collapsed on the plane, I'd have just died. <laughs> like it's so so scary to think about. Um, so after this, I had a biopsy under my arm. Took it from the little tumor because it's easy to get to. That was a traumatic experience. I'll talk about all the medical stuff maybe in a different video. Um, you can know more about each procedure and stuff. I'll do little videos on them. Um, because each one I know a lot about now. <laughs> And then, so I was immediately set on steroids. Steroids are a very, very miracle treatment that stop the growth of, it's like, it's like inflammatory. So it basically can halt tumors. It can, so it halted the tumor it, whilst we were waiting for the biopsy results. It halted it from, from growing anymore. I was in hospital for five days. Um, there was a little bit of breakdown in communication with the nurses and I was discharged after six days. This is a whole other story I won't get into. But basically I should not have been discharged under any circumstances. It was the worst thing that I could have done. I was extremely, extremely poorly on death's door. And they stopped the steroids, which is the worst thing they could have done. So there's some kind of communication breakdown. I'm not sure. I'm going to follow it up because I don't want to happen to anyone else. And mistakes to happen like that. But within 12 hours of being discharged, I was back in hospital. Same thing again, having a heart attack, heart attack, heart attack. Because the tumour had been growing because the steroids had stopped and nothing could stop it. So this tumour had grown, bear in mind it's so big, it had grown from nothing to uh, 15 by 6 centimetres, it's huge in two months, it's a very aggressive tumour, so of course it grew back within 12 hours of stopping steroids, it's, the month, it was, yeah, <laughs> very scary, so I was immediately back in hospital, oxygen was on the floor, I was, I've been told since then that they thought I was a goner, they thought I was literally fading, my whole life was fading out of me, but that was, they thought was it for me, it was very touch and go. Um, I remember being on the chair just saying to my mum, <laughs> just wear bright colours at my funerals. <laughs> my funeral, like, I, it's crazy to think about that now, but I do remember saying that. And I was generally thinking about this stuff, and I was even trying to text some friends and stuff and just saying, oh, <laughs> I love you to faces. Um, cause I, I thought that was literally, yeah, I felt like I was fading. Um, so yeah, after that whole ordeal, I was transferred to St. James Hospital in Leeds. So the young um, adult and teenage cancer care unit, it's a specialist cancer care unit, one of the best in the country. They are incredible. It was I was transferred there middle of the night, which is another story in itself, which was really scary. I had to get unplugged from everything. And then it was a 45 minute drive over there, my mum and dad's car, trying to stay alive. <laughs> um, traumatic, made it there. Being there was the worst night of my life. I think it hit me what I was going through and what I was about to go through and what my life was about to become when I was in that hospital bed in a proper cancer unit. Um, after that, I was in the hospital for over a month there with being very poorly, waiting for biopsy results. Um, and then eventually started my chemo and then getting an infection. So all in all, it was over a month. And over that month, I got so used to being in two hospital wards, uh, walls, that I, I couldn't even leave the ward without passing out because my eyes were so desensitized to anything that's not the room. I completely needed like, what's the word? Um, almost like physiotherapy to try on like my eyes, <laughs> trying on my whole body. I couldn't, I couldn't walk anywhere. But let, let, let alone what I couldn't use a wheel in a wheelchair anywhere because I was so immobile for a month. I'd lost complete ability of everything. So it, to say it, <laughs> I went from the most active person on earth traveling islands to literally that. It is pretty traumatic, to say the least. Um, and let's try to think what. It's all such a blur when I think about it. Um, yeah, the biopsy came back. It wasn't what we thought it was. We thought it was Hodgkin's lymphoma because Hodgkin's lymphoma prevents a lot, um, presents a lot like this and a lot like a lot of tumours that they yeah, are seen. But it wasn't. It was a worse one. It's not a Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's called primary mediastinal diffuse large B cell lymphoma. It is not genetic. It is complete luck, sadly, or bad luck, you could say nothing that I've done that could have caused it because that's what I was thinking I was like well, I've lived a pretty healthy life 
what on earth has caused this? I want you to know, but no, it's just bad luck. Um, I didn't have any time to preserve my fertility, which I will also do a whole other video on because that is a really big thing for me. So we will see about that. Um, I started chemo on the February the 20th, so I think it was about 12 days after the chemo was found, basically started straight away as soon as I knew what it was. Um, I'm on the most intensive chemo regime known to man, where I go in for six days and I'm strapped up. Oh. Sorry, I just, sorry, I just got off the phone with some therapist because I'm traumatised and need help. <laughs> what was I, where was I up to? So yeah, I'm currently, I've just finished round three of chemo. Chemo has been way harder than I thought it would be. I don't know why I thought, I underestimated it definitely. I thought my body was stronger than it is. Obviously it's not with the cancer and chemo is literally like dropping a nuclear bomb on you. It's the hardest thing I will ever have to go through and ever have had to go through. The hospital stays are horrendous. I hate, hate sitting in bed. It makes me so restless. I'm not the kind of person that can sit and watch TV or Netflix series. I hate it. I'm really not like that. I don't do that often. So I'm all, all, almost always usually so poorly that I can't even look at a screen. Like I, the only thing I can do to relieve my symptoms is try and sleep. But even then I get hallucinations. Again, I will do stuff on these symptoms in a separate video because there's so much to talk about. Um, but yeah, until, so where I'm up to now is I've just done third chemo. I came out on Monday. Um, I had my PET scan booked, mi my mid-treatment PET scan for next Friday and then I'll wait two weeks for the results. So that is a big, 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 big day for me. I'm terrified to say the least, I'm trying not to think about it too much or I'll just go crazy. I'm trying to think positive hoping the treatment's working. Um, I had a CT scan done a couple of weeks back for another thing because of, of infection and they did say that they had seen a partial response to the treatment. Doesn't always mean that it's going to continue working though. So, but that's a good sign I guess. And it's hard to say whether my symptoms are improving because the chemo makes me so ill. So I feel iller than I did when I didn't know I had cancer. So it's hard to say that, and I'm so breathless all the time because my body is so weak. So it's difficult to know if it's working in myself. Um, yeah, but that's where I'm up to now. I just wanted to do this quick, quick, quite long, sorry time. Um, I try to be myself as possible because I think it's the only way to be, and I don't see any point in sugarcoating it. I think if anything can good can come out of this horrible situation, it's raising awareness that normal people like you and me this can happen to you and most importantly push for checks and doctor's checks if they're not giving you checks you think you need just push 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 because I was I was away from death when they found what was wrong with me and I was told I was young fit healthy and you never think it happened to you still almost can't believe it <laughs> like that's what I feel like I'm just, I really can't believe it so yeah, thank you for listening and thank you for the support as well. I've, I can't even put into words how much it means to me. I read every single message that I get. I can't always reply because I'm so poorly, but I read every single message and it's cheers me up so much. People are honestly gold dust. And in times like this, it's made me realize how amazing people are and how much goodness there is in the world. I can't even put into words how amazing it would be. And it, I probably wouldn't get through this without the support I've had from even strangers on the internet. <laughs> um, you are incredible. So thank you so much. And I'm going to a hotel spa tomorrow. My parents are paying as a treat for me. So I'm very excited. I'm hoping that I won't pass out at all. Because I have been recently a little bit from the menopause and induced stuff and the chemo. So fingers crossed it goes well. I might do a little video of that as well, me and my friend and document it, do a little vlog, okay. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs>